everybody. So it's been a couple of days because we're working with, you know, what everybody else is working with. Coronavirus issues. Closing, opening, what to do, what to do. So in the meantime, I've been trying to make sure that our business is covered, our brick and mortar in Tallahassee, Florida, and that all our consigners items are covered because it is spring break officially today. And because of the craziness of the coronavirus, we want to make sure that all our consigners are protected financially and that our customers are protected and, you know, all those things you have to do as a business person that they don't teach you in business school. All right, I am opening up my Peacock and Dixie Bell. This is Peacock and I've used this many times. I am using my Dixie Bell OM brush, oval medium. And this is, if you go to my Facebook, Van Walker, you'll see that I ask people, what color should this be? So many people had very, very, very strong opinions. And I think, I think that when world-renowned artist Carrie Ann Bade says, hey, turquoise, <laughs> says turquoise. You do what Carrie Ann says because Carrie Ann knows her stuff. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, look up Carrie Ann Bade, B A A D E. She is a professor at Florida State University and a worldwide renowned artist and one of my favorite artists personally. And so I was super happy to see her to respond my simple question of what color should this be so turquoise I'm actually going to be doing a mixture of what did I just say peacock and then I'm going to play around with maybe a little bit of sea glass and then I'm playing around with the idea I'm playing around with the idea yes it's sleepy I haven't, I haven't oiled the wheels yet because that comes later I'm playing around with the idea with some metallics and gold or maybe silver but I'm thinking gold to go for a geode look. What that means so far, I couldn't tell you. I just know it in my head and I know my vision. I'm using my uh, sprayer. We sell these on our website. And by the way, I was just notified very sweetly actually by Country Chic Paint that I am not allowed to sell Country Chic Paint on eBay or Etsy. So for those of you who have been ordering from us, that one we have paint specifically, Country Chic, it's made in Canada by a local family there. Great people. If you have been ordering from me for your Country Chic supplies, just know that you can get it off our Instagram and our website. So please just, just know that we still carry it. We're still proud of carrying it. We just can't sell it on what is called a third party resale site, which I'm learning being a family owned business. I'm learning all this. What that means is eBay, Etsy, Amazon. So bear with me. You can also just send me an email, the other side vintage at gmail.com and say, Hey, I need these colors or Contact me on Instagram, the other side vintage, or Zan Walker, the other side vintage. I'm um, sorry, on Instagram or Facebook. I don't mind you contacting me. It'd be better to go through the business because there's always someone answering that 24 7, as opposed to me personally when I'll have to refer you to someone else that works for me or myself, depending on who's on shift that day, meaning my sister or such. All right, there's that first coat. Um, using this oval brush and that's the first one. Now some of you did mention please paint the levels different colors and I kind of like that idea. I think that might have been Kim Casey from What's the Point Piercing by the way also a Tallahassee business in Tallahassee Florida off Gaines Street. Um, she may be relocating because of some of the issues Gaines Street's having with some of the buildings but if you ever need a piercing Kim Casey can help you out. Um, I liked Kim's idea of each one being a different color. In that situation, I was thinking more of my 80s because I uh, 
graduated in 88 and went back to the 80s where this would be turquoise one level, red one level, and maybe a really bright yellow another level, which brings me to the case that many of you said bright yellow. So that was another color. Several of you said do black with gold. And I like that idea, but believe it or not, black with gold does not sell. I can't give away anything painted black or with gold on it lately. I used to love to paint things black. I think there should always be, what is that rule? One piece of black furniture in every room to stabilize the room or to ground the room, so to speak, to say. And I love that idea, but black does not sell for me. What does sell is turquoise. And Carrie Ann knew that, but she says turquoise sells. What else sells is pink, and someone did mention pink. And what else sells is just white neutral, which several of you did say just paint this white. But I just painted something white. And if you watch YouTube, you can see, just go back a video or two. I went with a very neutral little end table or chest of drawers, if you want to call it that. It was more small, so I would say end table. And I went neutral. I went with white. I need some color in my life right now. And turquoise was really the color I kind of was looking for, even though this is not turquoise, this is peacock. So, back in the day, this would have probably been turquoise or red. Some of you said red. Believe it or not, red does not sell in my store. Can't give away red right now. I don't know why. In the fall, yes. In the springtime, not so much. So yes, I'm not doing all the sides. I know I missed the side down here, so don't. I know some of y'all are yelling, you missed the side. I'm gonna go back. I'm just trying to give you guys a quick look at putting that first coat on, getting it pretty smooth because this is metal and a metal item to me is smooth and bright and shiny as opposed to like a piece of furniture that would be more like you know, shabby chic, and you see the brush strokes. By using this brush, there's very little brush strokes, and by using the Dixie Bell paint, which self-levels, there's not so much issue of the brush strokes on this piece. Okay, I just sprayed a little too much water on that because it is doing that. So what I'm gonna do is just smooth it out and come back to it. This is a, what used to be kind of a mustardy, yellowy uh, color, and then they painted it brown for some reason. And then when they got it scratched up or through use, the mustardy colors coming through. Um, and I am going to maybe bring back some of those colors, or I may just make it bright and shiny so many choices and like with all pieces I tell you what I'm thinking but what it ends up being is usually not originally the plan which is what I love about each piece being kind of custom all right I'm gonna stand up I don't know if you'll be able to see me I won't be able to see me filming but I'm gonna try to hurry up and get this coat on the top this brush is working really good if you hear the kitty crying, that's Mikey outside saying, Let me in. But he uh, just went outside. I, I never was a big cat person. I, I had dogs over cats, but now that we rescued a cat, now we have several cats hanging out. I'm learning that cats are really fun, quirky, and each one is different. Especially because the one we do have is Petey, and he is a domestic black short to medium hair cat with attitude. I'm gonna pull that off. And Mikey, who showed up, not my kitty, is a Manx with no tail and orange, and he is stout 
and frisky and loving. Whereas Petey is independent, loving for five minutes a day, and then leave him alone the rest of the day, or he's not happy. He's anti-social kitty. Kind of like me, I guess. He's more like me. I love people, but people wear me out. I can only take some small doses, people. Here, I can see all of you all the time and talk to you and respond. At the store, you guys can talk to me for hours and I need a nap afterwards. I'm worn out. Anybody else like that? That's such an introvert thing. A social introvert problem. I did clean this piece, by the way, before painting last night. I used a cleaner. Got all the grease and junk off of it. Uh, I am still finding a little, a little bit of lint here and there. And while I'm painting, I'm just pulling it out. Alright, now the paint is almost off the brush. I'm just going to get some of that paint off my brush by going ahead and putting it on the side. Again, I know I didn't do all the sides yet. What I'm trying to do is just to get a base coat on them. Because it is metal, it doesn't take the paint like it would if it was wood, like a piece of furniture. Excuse me if I'm in the way of the... And what I'm doing is offloading my brush by going ahead and painting parts that could be painted instead of washing the paint down the drain. I try to use as much paint as I can. It makes the paint go pretty far. Alright, there we go. It is Peacock. Dixie Bell Peacock, which is a more blue tendency towards uh, turquoise. I am going to turn this around. Like I said, I still have a little bit on my brush. And I am going to finish this up. Oh, where did I get this piece? We got this piece from an excellent estate um, put on by Sal. Um, Sal and Tracy put on great estate. They're very fair in prices for the family and for customers. And he was nice enough to let us know about this piece. And we got this and some great clothing that's in the store. So go to our Instagram to see those items. And you'll see some of the things we got this week from Sal. And modeled by Lindsay in Brooklyn and Kayla. All right, you guys. There is that first coat. Hello, everybody. So it's Saturday the 14th, and I have let this piece dry overnight. Mm -hmm. Wetting my thing. <coughs> my brush, sorry. <clears throat> The pollen is so bad out. I'm trying to get the get used to it, but I have hay fever, so it makes me miserable. Anyways, okay. I am using the peacock, same color, using the same brush that I let dry overnight, and I'm gonna add another coat of peacock onto this piece. And since I did it yesterday and it works well, I'm gonna spray this down just a little bit. Makes the paint go a little bit further. There. Wait for the smell. I uh, posted the first part of this video on Instagram yesterday and I had to speed it up for it to fit the time allotment. And it was funny, it looked like I was like on something. I was like, oh, 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 oh. but now I haven't decided whether just not to talk <laughs> or to talk slower so that when I speed it up, if I have to again, 
it won't be so crazy. Which over here, I hit the metal part of this and I don't want paint on that, so I'm gonna rub that off a bit. There. Now I am gonna hit the side of this that I didn't get yesterday. This brush works really well for this project. It's the oval medium that Dixie Bell makes. And yes, we do sell them. And the reason why we sell them is because I like them and use them so much that we also sell them. That way I know that they really work before I sell them. I don't sell things in the store that I haven't used myself. Because otherwise, how do I know if it really is worth it for you to spend your money on? Got to try it out first. All right, I'm going to, again, spray the brush. I'm going to go ahead and get this side. I left the sides yesterday knowing I was going to come back to them. I was just trying to get that first coat on the piece. Because you can have several projects going on at the same time if you just go ahead and get the first coat on. That way, in between your other projects, like for example, this morning I got up super early and went to an estate sale. Um, found some really cute collectibles, some mushroom canisters, and some other really cute retro drinking glasses. I got them cleaned up and disinfected and re-tagged for the store and bagged up to head to the store because we're open today. Brooklyn and Jason are watching the store today. Um, and then we got a last minute contact online from one of our clients who's having a clear out of his uncle's items because I guess his uncle is downsizing and we not we Jason had to run over there and found some amazing mid-century pieces of furniture including a bedroom set and some other decor items I was really in love with some lamps that they had sent to me as a possible purchase but they looked good in picture but when you see them in person they were cracked and damaged and beyond repair for what I needed to spend on them to be able to resell and also just beyond repair. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time and effort fixing something that's not even going to be like a huge, it's not one of those wow things. If it's not like wow to our customers, like, ah, it's okay. And then don't, I don't want to spend all that time and energy on it when I can be working on more wow items, which... It's just my policy. Okay. Now, I'm going to spray the second level of this. Get a second layer of paint on this. I'm going to say thank you to Rose and some other people who sent us some lovely inspirational messages while we're all dealing with uh, coronavirus issues and the loss of a dear friend of ours that worked for us with years who became like a part of our family, Jay Godin. I'm going to say his name a lot just out of respect for his family and out of respect for a friend that was really a decent friend for many years to me and my family in our business. But Rose sent me a really nice message knowing that I was having a little bit of a rough spot. Alright, I am going to spin a little bit. The wheels need to be, you know, WD-40 because you can tell. So I'm going to try to hurry up here. I'm taking a little time. So just fast forward. This is basic. Um, I used to just cut and not film all of it and just kind of do a before and after. And then people were like, can you show me how you did that? And then I would just do one coat 
and say, okay, and then just add the other coats. And then some people be like, I really appreciate it when you film putting on the second and third and fourth coats because it helps me see the how much change can happen between the first coat and the second coat. Because at first I thought I was making a mistake and then I realized by watching your video that it really doesn't make a difference to keep on with the coats. So for those who don't want to watch it, just fast forward. Legs, which is fine, it would come off easily, but I just, since I'm here, I'm going to touch up. I'm going to turn this around. Spray this a little bit. Spray my brush. If you're using Dixie Belt paint, it's thicker, which means a lot less drip, no smell. So I'm painting inside my house, even though it's beautiful outside today. Kind of actually warm it up. Um, so you can paint in your own home and not worry about the kids or the animals and the smells that can give you headaches with some of the other paints that I've dealt with in the past. But always, if you're using Dixie Bell, have a spray mist bottle. And you want to use the kind that's like artisan kind, the kind that sprays little mist, not like just a spray bottle you get at the dollar store. Now I used that in the beginning, a dollar store sprayer, but the Fine mist makes a huge difference, and it's worth the extra few bucks. We do sell them in our store, and we do sell them and ship them out to you if you need one. I believe they're twelve fifty each, shipping about five dollars. Or you can order some paint, and I can throw the bottle in there so you can just combine shipping. Or you can check out I don't know what is it Hobby Lobby and some other places that might carry them. If you shop from us, we appreciate it because it supports our family-owned business and helps us stay open, especially during coronavirus and other things like hurricanes and such that we get in Florida. Okay, I'm going to pull this around. I am going to offload it on some of the side the extra paint I have. Offloading just means instead of washing it down the sink, I'm going to uh, use it on the actual project. Okay, I'm going to stand up like I did before. See if I can get it to film that top layer. One more coat on this. And then I'm going to let it dry for a couple hours while I work on loved paperwork. Signer updates, taxes. Paying the rent, all those fun things. Sales tax, employee tax, all those fun things we all have to do. That's worth it. it. Means you're in business. Speaking of taxes, my niece just did a video on YouTube about self employed taxes. Green eyed starlet. Brandy Walker. If you want to look, it's so cute to see the next generation of business owners talk about their newfound, oh my god, I gotta pay this and I gotta pay this and oh my gosh, keep your receipts and all that. So true. So true. So it was refreshing to see Brandy learning all that. Some things she already knew. Some things she's learning because she's new at it. But it was pretty impressive to see what the 20 year old think about taxes and all the laws and how to prepare taxes and what you got to keep for write offs. It was cute. You should watch it. All right. There is another coat. That up a little bit, and I'm going to use the excess of this on a. Um, I've done this before, I'm putting the lid back on. Yeah, time wise, we're right over. Let me just grab a canvas that I got that someone had painted something on, and it I got it at you know, I got it at the thrift store. And so, let's see if I can do this without turning it off. Just take your excess paint you still have left on your brush. I'm gonna 
actually spray it down and get a little bit of the water in there. And then I'm going to be able to reuse this canvas for my next project by simply using my excess paint from this bar cart onto this canvas. See that? So what I'm doing is instead of just washing this paint down the drain, and by the way, because it is low VOC and naturally made, it's able to go down the drain with no problem. I am going to just touch up the sides, see that? All from the same brush offloading and using, I know I should not hold it with my hand, but I'm trying to show you guys, I'm trying to get these edges painted with leftover paint. This paint goes a long way. You can get many projects done. So just have, I always say that, you could have a mini mirror where you just need the frame painted and use the same by offloading it. Come around a little bit. And see now, I've almost got this whole backdrop painted. Here's what I do. I'm gonna spray it a little bit. I know it's out of reach as far as you're viewing. So I watered it down. And I'm going to take my paintbrush and get a lot more off. Crisscross, crosshatch. Really work it into that canvas. And now I have a backdrop already painted for my next art piece. Again, just using the paint that would have gone down the drain. Just a little bit of water activating this paint. See? Now I can use that for my next project. All right, guys. Next up soon. We're recreating, re-upcycling, what's the word? Upcycling. Upcycling, this bar cart. It was a really, 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 really bad shape. It has been painted. It's not finished as far as the design, but let me show you this. This, can you see, I don't know if that's gonna show up in video. Do you see how bad this is? This is really old. So everyone says uh, the best thing to use is steel wool, and I suggest steel wool that's zero, 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 zero. That's the level. Four zeros. Make sure it's four zeros still wool. And then just get an old cloth because this is just to clean up. But a lot of people had suggested WD-40, which I understand because it unlocks rust and helps things smooth glider. It's a lubricant. It's a cleaner. So yes, but I was thinking about it. And what's better than WD-40 when you're working on a bar cart? Well... Barkeeper's Friend. Barkeeper's Friend is a soft cleanser, removes rust, lime, stains, and tarnish. Now, it is a little bit of caustic, especially when you're going to mix these two items. So make sure you're wearing a glove. You're going to take it. It says shake well, so make sure you shake well. And then you're going to gingerly apply right onto your still wool that's oh 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 four oh sorry four zeros let it get in there a little bit make sure you have something down here because you're going to drip and you don't want to ruin anything but and this is the cloth that you're going to wipe it off don't get it on your hands get it on the gloved hands and you're just going to kind of apply it like you would lotion at first let that sit just for a second and then you're going to take your arm strength which i don't much left up and you're going to really really use the abrasiveness of that steel wool now I'm going up and down but I'm also going to go back and forth this way and it's best to work on small sections 
And I'm telling you, it's a workout. And then you're going to take this and wipe it back off. And it may take two or three times in the same position to get it, but I don't know. Yeah, see, it's not as shiny yet. You'll know because you'll still see pitting. And I'm just going to use what's still on here, but you want to reapply as needed. You'll know because it'll dry out. And just keep using that arm strength. Try not to get it on your paint. I would suggest doing this before you paint it. I always do things backwards because, yeah, I don't think it through. And then wipe it down. You want to use a rag that you're going to throw away. Now, I don't know if you can see the difference already between here and I haven't done all the way to the side and here. I don't know if that's picking up, but that's the difference. It does smell a little bit, so you may not want to do it inside. It is pouring outside and decide to use it outside. And make sure you throw this glove away because it's starting to eat the, the plastic of the glove, the silicone, whatever. But that's my suggestion. Another reason to have barkeeper's friend around all the time.